So in this final recording, we'll be taking a look at the Iron Age uh, and the final period uh, of our Celtic village. Uh, the long uh, culmination, right, of our small village that once began uh, just over here, right, is a collection of Paleolithic huts and now has become a large uh, city of about 250 individuals. So what we'll take a look at in this video uh, is the impact of the Iron Age uh, on our Celtic village. Uh, and we'll look at how the technologies, uh, buildings, and other things have changed the social life uh, of the people who are in it. First of all, as you can see, uh, we've got uh, you know, people plowing the land, uh, obviously uh, the use of horses, uh, and uh, are going to make this substantially easier. Uh, but people still would go outside and work alongside the pack animals as well. So most of the village uh, is obviously going to work as far as planting. Uh, you can see as far as the amount of fields that we have has increased substantially to surround the village almost completely, which was pretty common in this era, uh, because as the population grows, certainly they're going to need more food. So obviously farming was a task uh, that the vast majority of people in the village are going to perform. Uh, as many as 90% of people in these villages in the Iron Age are going to be farmers. And so uh, ultimately it's a job that people would have been familiar with and that many people performed because it was necessary. All right, so as far as the Iron Age, uh, as you can see, the one big difference I would say is we have a higher population. Uh, number two, you can see that the village's huts have all been upgraded. We don't see any more really daub huts that are left. Now uh, we've basically gone to the roundhouse structures, as we mentioned before, uh, that are basically made out of stone with thatching combined uh, and a uh, substructure made out of timber. So these things are enormously uh, efficient heat-wise. Uh, in fact, people even build uh, houses today that are similar in some ways into the ground because they're so thermally efficient. And so we've got houses that are much better uh, than what uh, they were using in the Bronze Age and in the Paleolithic era, certainly. Uh, the other thing we've got uh, in the Iron Age uh, is that people in this era have essentially upgraded their defenses significantly. As you can see, the old palisade with the ditch has now been changed uh, into a wall that's made out of stone. Uh, again, it's still mis missing the ditch, which is probably the most important defensive development of this era, but regardless... Uh, we work within the system that we're given, right? Uh, we've got guard towers, uh, which you can see have got uh, iron on them to hold them together and a thatched roof. Uh, we have essentially platforms that basically cover most of the wall so that people can um, essentially attack from behind it. And so uh, we have reinforced gates as well, uh, which have iron in them uh, to be able to strengthen them against attack. And so this is a village uh, that tends to get attacked a lot. Uh, and so as a consequence, it is very well prepared uh, to defend itself if necessary. Uh, typically, these were built on large hills. Uh, obviously, with the game, it's hard to build on hills. So obviously, my village is like on a prairie, which is not probably where you'd want to put your village. You'd want to put it like up in here somewhere where you could you know, defend it easily. Uh, but obviously, we, again, we work with the system that we have. So uh, a lot of these Iron Age forts would have been built as hill forts. Uh, because of their protective capabilities. Uh, new aspects of the village besides uh, our uh, more substantial uh, defenses. Uh, here you can see over here a water mill. Uh, this of course is designed to make flour. So uh, the advantage of this of course is that it uses water power. Uh, hopefully somebody will come over here and make some grain. They typically do. Uh, but when they do we'll obviously uh, talk extensively about how the water wheel operates. But uh, basically yeah with the water wheel now because it's water powered um, this can make grain very quickly. It obviously, uh, the spoke interacts with a mechanism that turns the mortar and pestle inside. And so there's no more of this having to crush it up yourself, which was an enormously laborious task. Uh, now, of course, uh, you can let nature do it for you. And it's, of course, one of the, the strengths of humans. Uh, another aspect you can see over here uh, is uh, granaries uh, that are called staddle granaries. Uh, these are typically built above the ground. The advantage of this, of course, is that they are less likely to be uh, invaded by rodents, uh, for example. Uh, and so, obviously, being above the ground, that's going to be significant. Uh, here's our water mill, so you can get an idea of how it operates. And so, yeah, basically, you put your grain in there, uh, let nature do the work for you, and so you can make a substantial amounts of flour uh, in a very short period of time. Now, over here, of course, with the Staddle Granary, uh, again, because it's off the ground, uh, this tend to make it uh, less likely to get invaded by rodents and, and other kinds of stuff. 
uh, and so because of that it can store grain longer. They also tend to be bigger uh, and better constructed uh, with their timber design, and so all of those uh, resulted in fewer losses uh, from uh, grain. I think that's basically what we're looking towards. Uh, other aspects that are different here in the Iron Age, certainly uh, the term iron, right, which comes from the idea that it's now being smelted. Uh, basically, this is what's called a bloomery. This is typically where iron was smelted. So as you can see, she working, she's working the bellows here, which pump oxygen into the structure to allow it to get hotter, right? And of course, the end product that she has, as you can see, uh, is she's produced uh, some iron, right? Uh, now, what you do with the iron, uh, a variety of things. Uh, obviously, iron can be made into weapons. It can be used to reinforce structures. It can be used uh, for nails. Uh, another thing, of course, that people started doing, especially in the late Iron Age, is the forging of steel. And I get this question frequently in my classes as to what's the difference between iron and steel. Uh, typically, steel is iron that has a very careful amount of carbon taken out or added in. Uh, typically, steel has other things added into it. Uh, steel, you'll sometimes see, uh, for example, if you want stainless steel, you'll add chromium into it. Uh, you can add various other elements into it to give it various, uh, you know, practice or various, uh, you know, qualities that you want or don't want. But typically steel is, is basically iron that has the amount of carbon very carefully controlled. So, you know, typically sword steel is like 1060. Uh, basically the amount of carbon in the blade, right, is typically indicated as part of that number. And that's what you're really looking for when you're looking for a good quality of steels. You want something you know, that either has high carbon content uh, where it's going to be able to hold a really good edge or a low carbon content where it's going to be more flexible. And so uh, obviously we begin to see steel weapons during this period. I think you saw a couple of people that were walking around with uh, steel swords in their hands. Uh, and so obviously steel is going to be superior to uh, bronze. Uh, it's going to be superior to iron. And so it typically becomes the metal that humans are going to work with, uh, really from the period of about 1200 BCE, uh, all the way really to uh, even the time of the Romans, uh, even into the Dark Ages. And so steel is, is basically going to be about the best metal that we're going to have for a significant proportion of time. So uh, we talked about uh, iron and steel, uh, which essentially give this era its name. Uh, other features, you've got the blacksmith shop here, uh, where people are going to begin to forge tools out of iron and steel, uh, which of course are going to be superior to those that came before it. Uh, we have a metal smithing shop here, where people are still making things out of copper and bronze. Uh, bronze was still used in this era, uh, if it was available, uh, but certainly it was going to be superseded by iron or steel, if available. So in the case of this village, right, uh, we only got a couple of blacksmiths, so uh, we use just about every metal that we can get our hands on. Um, here you can see a woman who is basically crafting grain, right, doing the old-fashioned mortar and pestle. So you can see her obviously struggling with this, as opposed to using the water wheel outside the village, which is going to be far more efficient. Uh, and so that's another example of how the Iron Age has changed things. Uh, this structure here, uh, also a part of the Iron Age, these were communal ovens that began to surface during this era. People started literally cooking their bread uh, in these big communal ovens where they could cook a bunch of it at once instead of just simply focusing on one or the other. Uh, so, you know, typically sitting around the campfire, right, you can make a little bit of bread fairly quickly, but with this one, right, you can make a bunch of bread. And so obviously the population is going to expand significantly because people, you know, could create a bunch of this stuff at once, uh, which is insignificant. Uh, other technologies of this era that are significant uh, as far as previous eras, uh, we already talked about the defenses, we talked about the nature of the weapons, um, we talked about the expansion of the village um, as far as how much bigger it's gotten. And so uh, really I think the big difference with iron is just better quality tools, uh, better quality weapons, uh, a village that's more prepared to protect itself in case of attack. And the last one I think we'll take a look at uh, is the village at war. Uh, so, you know, how are these guys going to be able to defend themselves? Uh, how are they going to be able to take these, you know, iron and steel weapons and use them effectively? Uh, and so all of these will be a part of the last aspect we'll take a look at, which is uh, the village physically being attacked.